Hi everyone, it's Chrissy, and for this episode of Inside Congress, I wanted to talk about the way classified documents are handled in our country. This has been in the news recently, both with the arrest of Jack Texera, the Air National Guardsman who is accused of leaking classified documents, and in the inquiries into whether or not President Biden and President Trump and their staffs may have improperly handled classified materials. Since this is such an important issue, and I've frankly been pretty outspoken about it, I wanted to explain to you all what exactly classified materials are, how they should be handled, some of the problems with the ways classified materials are currently being handled, and some of the ways I believe we could improve the process. So what types of materials are secret? In the US, we have many levels of classified documents based on the level of sensitivity. Some of these categories in the order of least to most sensitive are confidential, secret, and top secret. While all of these are protected, meaning none of these should be made public, the higher the classification for a document, the greater the danger to the national security if that information does indeed become public. If you have a top secret clearance, you can see information at the lower levels of secret and confidential. This doesn't mean that just anyone with a top secret clearance can see everything labeled top secret though. You still must have what's called a need to know. This means that seeing these documents must be directly related to the specific work that you are doing. You need to know it to do your job. There are a number of reasons why we keep documents secret. In a democracy, of course, transparency is incredibly important. And that's why part of what, part of what I wanted to do in sharing these videos is to share what goes on here in Congress. However, there is some information, especially related to our national security or military and foreign affairs, that really could be harmful for our national security if it got into the wrong hands or was made public. Information about military capabilities could be used against us, or the re release of classified information could compromise intelligence gathering and possibly even put American lives at risk. In order for people to access documents like these and their content, there is a very rigorous background check procedure. This limits the chances that someone with ill intentions might be able to get a hold of sensitive material. When you apply for a clearance, there are a number of things that you have to disclose, from financial information to foreign contacts. Staff from the Office of Personnel Management will then speak in person to many people who you have lived with or work with around you for many years. Overall, this process is quite invasive and can take at least six months and sometimes much, much longer. But it's very important to do proper due diligence when deciding who will get a clearance. Regarding the recent news about the Department of Defense information that was leaked online, the investigation is very much still ongoing, and I trust that the Pentagon will be taking appropriate action and that the, those responsible for this leak will be held accountable. The unfortunate truth is that we cannot stop all bad actors, and if someone has a clearance, there's always a risk that they could release information. And that's why it's so important to have that rigorous process for ensuring only the right people have access to these materials and having better training and understanding of the seriousness that could happen to prevent future leaks. I also want to emphasize that this leak is not representative of the intelligence community as a whole. These men and women, including enlisted service members, National Guardsmen and women, and federal officials are committed to protecting our national security and to serving our country, and we should not diminish the important work that they are doing. When I was in the Air Force working with classified material, I was subject to those rigorous clearance procedures. Those working on classified materials also receive regular training on how to handle materials. And now as a member of the Intelligence Committee here in Congress, whenever we are looking at classified documents, which happens very often, we need to go into a sensitive compartmented information facility, also called a SCIF here in the Capitol building. This is the same thing that members of our intelligence community do when they review classified material. How is a SCIF different from a regular room? The short answer is that it's uniquely designed to make it really, really hard to penetrate or to bug. Even then, when you go into a SCIF, you have to leave all of your phones and personal electronics outside with security. Even my staff are not allowed to get in with me unless they also have top secret clearance and also need to leave all of their belongings outside the SCIF as well. While I said that people must have a rigorous background check to handle or see this material, it's really interesting to note that this is not the case for members of Congress. Members don't go through the security clearance process to have access to some of these inf this information that others do. While almost everyone else with access goes through that lengthy, 
difficult and invasive process to get their clearance, newly elected members of Congress are granted top secret, top secret clearance on day one simply by signing a piece of paper with really little or no training at all. A lot of materials are still only viewed on a need-to-know basis in Congress, but classified briefings for all members of Congress are not uncommon. Recent briefings for all members, for example, have co covered the high-altitude surveillance balloon and updates on Russia's attack on Ukraine. There are really always ways that we could reform how we handle classified material, and there are currently debates over whether overly classifying information is an issue, which means making too many things classified that perhaps don't need to be. However, the biggest thing that we can do right now for members of Congress might be to make sure they all go through the same processes that everyone else in our military goes through and in our intelligence community goes through when they receive a clearance. They should also receive the very same training as those with top secret clearances do and better understand how serious it is to protect our national secrets. I'm hoping that this cleared up what classified materials are, who handles them, and the process of handling them, especially here in Congress. If you have any other questions about this or other topics you'd like to know more about, please contact my office and let us know. Until then, and until I see you all back at home, please be well and please take care of one another.